Story number one. I have a great relationship with my son-in-law. When my late husband Mason was still alive, he taught him how to do various chores around the house, such as cutting grass and chopping wood. Even when Mason was very sick and couldn't do much, Michael, my son-in-law, would come and lend a hand. Now that I am 51 years old, I don't feel old at all. Because of my husband's illness, I had to go without a partner in bed for a long time, so now I am rediscovering myself. My daughter is now 31, and it's amazing to see how she has grown. Thankfully, she has found a great husband who is always there for her. They live in the city, but recently came to visit me. My daughter had to go back to work in a few days, but Michael offered to stay with me for another week and help me with anything I needed. I gladly accepted his offer as it would make my days less lonely and I could use the extra help. I couldn't help but smile and wink at him, expressing my sympathy. I truly adore my son-in-law. We used to swim in the pool together and I remember him looking at me with admiration. Now when I see him, I can't help but think about how handsome he is. And when Anna mentioned that Michael could stay with me, I was relieved and started imagining all the things we could do together. It had been so long since I'd been with a man and longed for love that I could imagine anything. And here was this handsome young man spending an entire week with me. It was like a dream come true. All that was left was to plan it perfectly. The first night we were under the same roof, I couldn't sleep a wink. The next morning I woke up feeling tired and empty. Why don't we go to the river? I suggested to Michael. Sure, mother-in-law, he replied. We had spent most of the day out of the house, and as we sat on the riverbank, I noticed Michael furtively glancing at me. There was a glint in his eyes, and I sensed that he wanted more. I realized that our trip to the river had been worth it, and I decided to take action. That night, I prepared a bottle of wine and made some sandwiches. My son-in-law asked if there was anything he could do to help. I simply asked him to sit down and wait for a while. Everything was ready, and sitting down at the table, I said, poor son-in-law. Let's get to know each other better, because frankly, it feels like we're not even related. Michael gladly offered to help me, and let me tell you, we had such a great time together that even the night seemed too short. The next day started the same as all the others, as if nothing had happened. And in the evening, my brother-in-law himself suggested, shall we continue yesterday's fun? Sure, I replied, and we went to the lawn under the tree to relax. Before that, my son-in-law and I had agreed that whenever he had free time, he would come over and help me because it can be quite boring and difficult without help. I will look forward to seeing him, ready to make delicious sandwiches and open a bottle of homemade wine and maybe even take another boat ride on the river. I am truly blessed to have such a wonderful relationship with my son-in-law, and I hope you all can experience the same with your own son-in-law. Story number two. John was completely enchanted by Pamela. The young Southern woman was stunningly beautiful and had a knack for attracting the attention of men. By the age of 27, she had already been married twice and divorced twice. John couldn't understand how this could have happened to her in such a short time since she was too young to be divorced so often. When John asked her about her ex-husbands, she just shrugged and said they couldn't handle her temper. And in some ways, they were right. After all, the girl was a hurricane in life and in bed. She was insatiable and always wanted more. Less than six months after meeting John and Pamela married. Until then, John knew almost nothing about Pamela's family. It wasn't until the day of the wedding that he met her father, a withdrawn man who seemed unfazed by the marriage. Her mother, on the other hand, was the complete opposite. After seeing her, John realized where Pamela got her looks and personality from. Rebecca, his mother-in-law, was simply stunning for her age. Men who happened to be in her neighborhood couldn't help but be charmed by her long white hair, expressive facial features, and penetrating gaze. But it was her beautiful body that attracted them even more. She liked to wear short skirts and dresses with large necklines. 
Along with her provocative appearance, her behavior matched it. She was used to being the center of attention and believed that everyone owed her something. The idea that she belonged to the royal lineage had long been ingrained in her mind. She never held back her thoughts and was bold enough to speak her mind. When she first saw John, she had arrogantly remarked, Pamela? Another one, eh? Well, let's see how long you hold out, handsome. With those words, Rebecca turned on her heels and sped away, leaving John with mixed feelings and thoughts. Pamela reassured her husband, asking him not to be offended by her mother's words and attributed them to her unique sense of humor. However, it soon became clear that there was no humor involved. Despite this, the wedding itself was delightful, and during the honeymoon, John managed to forget about the statements of his mother-in-law for a while. However, after the trip, Pamela informed him that her parents had invited them to their house for dinner, dot as much as the man did not want to spend the last weekend before work alone with his wife, but he had to agree. He didn't want to upset his lovely wife. Their new relatives lived in a spacious private house, a five-minute walk from the sea. They used to rent apartments to vacationers, but this year they decided to take a break and enjoy the peace and quiet, leaving the three-story house almost empty. Spending time in a small family circle liked John much more than socializing with his wife's relatives at the wedding. During this time, he saw a different side of his father-in-law and mother-in-law. Although Rebecca still had an arrogant demeanor, her jokes and style of conversation no longer struck John as rude or inappropriate. John kept his eyes on his mother-in-law. Even in the evening, when the temperature dropped a little, she wore a dress that showed off her shoulders and her long, slender legs were adorned with fashionable sandals. From time to time, she would cross her legs, as if on purpose, to show off their beauty and attract the attention of her son-in-law. All four enjoyed delicious drinks, which were consumed with incredible ease, as a result of which, by the end of the evening, everyone was in a good mood. The father-in-law went out to smoke and disposed of the empty bottles, inviting John to keep him company. It was the first time he had taken a personal interest in him, and John couldn't refuse. As they stepped aside and lit a cigarette, father-in-law scrutinized his son-in-law before uttering a short sentence. Be careful, he warned. With what? John inquired. Not with what, but with who? With those women, clarified father-in-law. You mean Pamela and Rebecca? You should be careful with all women, but especially those women advised father-in-law. Why? asked John. They'll drink all the juice off you and not choke on it, replied father-in-law. John breathed a sigh of relief, turned and silently retired to the house. John was very much puzzled by his behavior. It seemed that his father-in-law had already been through so many bad things with his wife and daughter that he waved his hand and silently walked away. However, John could not understand his father-in-law's action. What kind of trouble could two seductive beauties bring? Of course, neither of them were naive country girls. They were strong-willed women. However, John felt that this was not a flaw, but rather their unique quality. When John returned to the girl's house, his father-in-law was gone, and the three of them continued their conversation. In his absence, the atmosphere had become even warmer and more frank. Rebecca, whom John hesitated to call mother-in-law because of her stunning appearance, turned out to be a remarkably good woman. If they had been alone together, one might have thought she was trying to seduce him. Sitting in the wicker chair, she was constantly adjusting her hair and adopting more and more refined poses. It was as if Pamela did not notice this behavior of her mother, but John wrote it off to the fact that she was just used to her and did not pay attention to such trifles. The young mother-in-law's behavior began to bother John somewhat. He realized that he was not looking at his wife, but at her mother, who was increasingly showing him signs of attention. As the pleasant evening came to an end and the neighbors quieted down, John and Pamela began to clear the table. Leaving the kitchen with his wife, he winked at his sweetheart and asked, Can I expect anything interesting tonight? Definitely. I just need to think about something and then take a bath so you can relax for now. 
John's wife put an unusual emphasis on the word relax, but he didn't pay much attention to it. He went outside to collect the remaining dishes, and when he returned to the kitchen, his wife was nowhere to be found. People in this house disappear all the time. Gloomily, he thought and turned back to his mother-in-law. Rebecca, thank you so much for the invitation and for the evening. We had a wonderful time. I really enjoyed your company too, John. Can you show me where my wife and I have a bedroom? She's disappeared, citing business. Missing? That wretched girl. John thought it was comical that a 27-year-old girl would say that. Yes, of course I will. I won't leave you. The woman gave her son-in-law another strange look that made him uncomfortable again. No, she's obviously giving me signs of attention, the man thought and followed her. Leading him along, she wagged her hips vigorously. Rebecca led her guest down the long hallway of the first floor and headed up the stairs. Following her, he kept his eyes on her. The sculpted muscles on her legs told him that the woman liked to exercise, particularly squats. The man didn't notice the semi-darkness around him, thinking only of the gorgeous body in front of him. They made their way up to the second floor, continuing to ascend without pause. John was stunned by the unexpected development, but continued to remain silent. His mother-in-law, on the other hand, showed no interest in the closed doors on the next floor. I was under the impression that there are only three floors here. Yes, you're right, only three. And beyond that, there's only the attic. Upon reaching the topmost level, the man found a lone room whose entrance was indistinguishable from the others. Expecting to see the usual attic cluttered with old and discarded items, John was surprised to find a bedroom with a spacious bed in the center. The decor was simple but charming. Is this a honeymoon suite? inquired the puzzled son-in-law. No, it's our room, you and me, honey, Rebecca replied, locking the door behind John and casting him a meaningful glance. The man felt like a victim caught in the web of an experienced spider, or rather spider woman. I don't understand you. The confused son-in-law tried to play the fool. Think less and do more. You do not think that this is a mistake we should not do it, does not seem. This is my house. And I alone decide who does what here. But John hesitated, for which he received a pretty solid kick in the chest area. Falling on the bed, and before he could regain consciousness, he found himself sodomized by a woman who always got what she wanted, especially in her own home. Half an hour later, she left the exhausted man alone. Don't relax. I'll call my daughter now. You still have the same thing to do again with her. I was shocked at this turn of events. My father-in-law had not warned me for nothing, and I thought he had just made it up. But to be honest, I liked it. Show me one normal man who didn't like it. Story number three. Our family was strong, built on trust and honesty. We were open with each other, and our intimacy was fulfilling. Little did I know that I would soon discover that I was hiding something from my wife after only two years of our marriage. It seems that long separations sometimes have unexpected consequences. Our shared education in biology provided a solid foundation, but after university, our career paths diverged. While I found stability and fulfillment in a local lab, my wife craved adventure. When she was presented with the opportunity to work in another city, she gladly accepted. She now spends much of her time traveling, collecting biological samples all over the country. Although I was happy for her because she had found the job she wanted, I was anxious about the long separation from my beloved. I was used to falling asleep with her in my arms and waking up to her youth and passion. My mother-in-law, Emma, was a progressive woman who understood the natural inclinations of young couples in the early years of marriage. She often left us alone at home, leaving unexpectedly for a walk during the day. Such long separations from my wife, however, proved to be an ordeal for me. If during three, four days I could concentrate on work and other duties, then after a week I began to see women's bodies everywhere. I confess, 
that I even caught myself looking at my mother-in-law, but I quickly dismissed these thoughts. Nevertheless, when my wife returned, I clung to her tightly, not wanting to let her go. Fortunately, she welcomed and appreciated our frequent moments of intimacy. Shortly afterward, she left again for another business trip for work. It was much easier for her to get over our separation than it was for me. The most difficult aspect of our life together was her absence for an entire month. Not knowing how I would cope without her or where to focus my efforts, I prepared for the worst. Surprisingly, the first time was manageable. I dove headfirst into my work, devoting long hours and receiving generous bonuses. However, returning late at night to an empty bed, I quickly began to feel the weight of its absence. Sleep would not come, and I would toss and turn for hours. The morning, however, was even more difficult. I had to save myself by immersing my body in cold water. But I still had to get to the bathroom, even though my mother-in-law was moving around the apartment. Slipping past her was impossible, and when we found ourselves face to face, I noticed her obvious curiosity about me. We exchanged hurried greetings, and I quickly disappeared into the bathroom. It felt rather ridiculous, like I was running away from her. Surprisingly, my mother-in-law remembered the moment too. The next day, which was Saturday, I allowed myself to sleep longer. I was awakened by my wife, who was on the phone bragging about another accomplishment on her trip. Listening to her, I tried to make sense of her words. Her voice alone had a profound effect on my body, similar to the effect of taking Viagra. After talking to my beloved for about 10 minutes, I got out of bed to stretch. I desperately wanted to go to the bathroom, but I couldn't risk being seen by my mother-in-law for the second day in a row in this condition. To distract myself, I tried doing various warm-up exercises, but nothing seemed to help. Disregarding the possible consequences, I ventured out into the hallway and, of course, I accidentally ran into my mother-in-law. It was as if she had been waiting for me, frightening me not only with her sudden appearance, but also with her gaze. She was wearing a negligee. At first, I mistook it for a nightgown, but naturally, I didn't scrutinize it, hurriedly slipping into the bathroom. The shower had a positive effect on me, not only on my body, but on my mind as well. After spending a fair amount of time in the shower, and taking care of my hygiene, I headed for the kitchen. Emma was a skilled cook and appreciated when her food was enjoyed. I shamelessly took advantage of this and relied on my mother-in-law's cooking for every meal. When my wife wasn't home, I didn't bother with breakfast, lunch, or dinner. George, I didn't know when you would wake up, so I didn't cook anything. Let me make something now, she said. Yes, of course, thank you. I'd be glad to, I replied without looking at her. As I sat down at the table, I glanced at her and quickly averted my eyes. She was still dressed the same. My imagination ran wild again, threatening to consume me. Good thing I had time to sit down, I thought to myself. Emma seemed to be teasing me, pacing back and forth in front of me. I couldn't take my eyes off her, and I didn't want to. My cheeks flushed, and my mouth was dry. I swallowed hard, continuing to watch her, almost in a trance. Suddenly, Emma turned around and looked me in the eye. What's the matter? Why are you looking at me like that? Are you okay? She asked, looking concerned. I'm fine. Just brooding, I replied. You're dressed so strangely. It's just a nightgown. Nothing out of the ordinary. It seems to be more than that, I said. You're acting weird, George. Emma smiled and said, You miss your wife, don't you? You don't have to say anything, I understand. What is it about this conversation that bothers you? She asked. Nothing, just your appearance, I replied. You seem to be expressing your displeasure. No, no, you are an incredibly beautiful woman. I sincerely admire your looks. However, our conversation was suddenly interrupted by the sound of the doorbell. Please open the door. I can't do that. What's the problem? Ah, now I understand. She repeated her words with a smirk. Emma interrupted her cooking for a moment and opened the door for the messenger. 
When she returned, she turned to face the stove. Without stopping to smile, she inquired, I'm curious. Is it the lack of a wife that's affecting you this way, or my appearance? What are you implying, Emma? Certainly the former. I swallowed the saliva that had accumulated in my mouth again. Let's see what she has in mind, I thought. You must have different thoughts, don't you? My mother-in-law sweetly remarked. Yes, I replied dryly. Hearing my answer, she stepped aside and gave me a strange look and went off to her room. I jumped up from the table and ran after her. Several plates and cups flew to the floor and, from the sound of it, shattered. I paid no attention to this, however. Meanwhile, the eggs in the skillet continued to sizzle on the stove. I hadn't noticed how much time had passed, and the consequences of my actions didn't immediately occur to me. Well, breakfast was ruined. My mother-in-law expressed her disappointment. I'll make a fresh one, she offered. No, something clicked in my head. Let's just do it again, what we had in the bedroom. Story number four. I am 30 years old, and my name is Kevin. Fate has taken me on a business trip to the city where my mother-in-law lives. She lives alone since her husband left her five years ago. Even though she is 50 years old, she is perfectly preserved. It's been six months since I last saw her, and it just so happened that on this trip, I didn't bring anything with me, not even spare underwear. I just got in the car and headed into town after being unexpectedly sent out of work. The director gave me a small amount of money from his pocket before sending me off. The only thing that consoled me was that my mother-in-law lived in that city. I arrived at 9 p. M. without telling my mother-in-law beforehand. I didn't want to bother her too much. When I rang the doorbell, her joy knew no bounds. I was covered in sweat, dirt, and road stink. The first thing I asked for was a shower. However, my mother-in-law informed me that the house was being renovated and there would be no hot water for a month. She quickly fetched a bucket of water from the bathroom and put it on the stove to heat it up. While we waited for the water to heat up, we had a quick snack and a drink. As we entered the bathroom, I puzzled over the question of how I was going to wash myself. My mother-in-law kindly explained that she would mix cold and hot water in a plastic basin to help me wash. Reluctantly, I had to agree. My mother-in-law scrubbed my back with a soaped washcloth and then, handing me a towel, left. We sat in the kitchen, talking and having a few drinks. I enjoyed her company and found her to be a pleasant woman with an attractive figure. I suggested we have a drink together, and she jokingly remarked that it might lead to a kiss with her son-in-law. I poured us both a drink, and we did kiss. I really wanted to. It was a nice moment spent with my mother-in-law. She expressed some hesitation in warning me about the dangers of drinking with my son-in-law. She confessed that she had admired me for a long time and finally had the courage to share her feelings. I took her hand, and we moved to a secluded spot in the apartment. The next thing I knew, I woke up to the ringing of my alarm clock. It was seven in the morning, and I had to rush to work. Before leaving, my mother-in-law made me breakfast. I promised to come back in the evening to continue our love story. As I walked down the steps to the street, my heart was pounding with anticipation. When I entered the hallway, I was greeted by my mother-in-law, dressed in a beautiful robe. She asked me if I wanted to eat now or later after relaxing with her in the bedroom. I quickly decided I would eat later, and she smiled back at me. My mother-in-law then fed me, as I was hungry as a wolf. As I contemplated the future, I realized that our relationship had changed forever. I realized that I would visit my mother-in-law many more times and that she had become more than just a mother-in-law to me. Each visit is sure to bring new pleasant stories. This meeting with my mother-in-law made me realize that not everything was perfect in my family life. I finally decided to confess everything to my wife, who surprisingly understood my desire for variety. She even said that you'd rather do it with my mom than with other people's girls. She was glad, because my mom had not had a man for a long time and I helped her a lot. That's how we live. Don't judge harshly. Everything happens in life.
Story number five. This incident involving my mother-in-law happened not too long ago, but it will remain in my memory for the rest of my life, especially since I am only 23 years old and in the beginning stages of my married life. I have always had a soft spot for my mother-in-law. Despite being a little overweight, she is a very attractive woman. We live in a large house where my wife and I share a mother-in-law. I often watch her tending the garden, and she does it with such grace, as if she knows I am watching her. Although we live with the three of us, my wife's non-native uncle Michael often comes to visit, and he and my mother-in-law enjoy spending long evenings together. When Uncle Michael stays overnight, it feels like a special occasion to me, as my wife tries to keep me awake at such times. One day, my mother-in-law and Uncle Michael came home late, after an outing, and proceeded to drink in the kitchen. At this time, I was lying on the couch in the hallway because of an argument with my wife. My mother-in-law retired to her bedroom, and Uncle Michael stayed in the kitchen and got so intoxicated that he left without saying goodbye to my mother-in-law. I was deeply upset when I realized that my wife would not be joining me tonight to resolve our differences. I did not yet know what would happen that night. In the middle of the night, my mother-in-law woke up and started looking for Uncle Michael. From the sound of her voice, she was about to enter my room. When she came in, she saw me lying on the bed, but because of the darkness, she couldn't recognize me. She said, Michael, is that you? I decided not to say anything, so I pretended to be asleep, not wanting to embarrass her. I assumed she would turn on the light, see it was me, and go back to her bedroom. However, to my surprise, she lay down next to me, and our unexpected love story began. I realized that everything happened purely by accident and had no serious meaning for me. After a while, I went to drink some water to calm down. While I was drinking, I pondered the need to go back to my wife, fearing that otherwise I would not survive the night if my wife found out. I went back and lay down next to my wife, and as if despite my wife wanted to make up with me. I felt completely exhausted. I was like a squeezed lemon after that unexpected meeting with my mother-in-law. Exhausted, I woke up around lunchtime and found the girls happily cooking in the kitchen. In search of fresh air, I went out onto the porch. When I returned, I found that the girls had already set the table and both were looking at me with satisfied smiles. It was such an intriguing real-life story that I couldn't imagine it could happen. It turns out that everything is my mother-in-law's fault, and I am a victim of circumstances. Of course I would like to believe that.